There are many different ways to edit a manuscript and provide feedback today. You can provide your feedback by hand writing on the manuscript itself, or you can use a computer program like Google Docs or Microsoft Word, or a combination of both. If you, your editor, or your critique partner are working with Microsoft Word, there are some features that you want to know how to use. So today I'm going to talk about how to use Word's track changes for easy book editing. In particular, I'm going to walk you through the different ways you can provide feedback, address that feedback, and adjust some settings that might make your critiquing and editing easier. Don't worry, I'm going to show you how to do this in Microsoft Word 2010 itself. This is Ignited Ink Writing, a channel dedicated to helping authors like you transform your writing so it lingers with your readers, because writing that lingers gets remembered and recommended to others. I'm Caitlin Burvey, editor and writer. Let's start with why use Microsoft Word track changes. I know it can get frustrating to constantly have to learn new technology, but when it comes to Microsoft Word track changes, it's worth it. Word, like it or not, is a fairly universal program. Most computers have a way to open and work with Microsoft Word documents. That means it's universal, so you probably already know how to use it to a certain extent, so you're not having to completely learn a new program, you're just adding to the knowledge that you already have. Track changes shouldn't scare you too much. Also, using something like track changes is much faster than working with an editor or critique partner by hand. Instead of having to mail your manuscript off or find a time to meet up, you can simply email it. So that communication is instant. This is a huge advantage in our modern society. Similarly, you can implement your changes immediately. If an editor or your critique partner marked that you forgot a period or something, all you have to do is accept that change. You don't have to then take your written document and find that exact place in your electronic version to make the change. You can simply use the electronic feedback and have it do it for you. In these ways, using an electronic editing software like Microsoft Word Track Changes will save both you and your editor or critique partner time. Now, you don't need to become a master of Word or Track Changes in order to use it effectively. All you really need to know how to do is view your feedback and accept or reject it. So that's what we're going to go over next. Seeing feedback and edits in Word's track changes. This is a copy of my short story, Letters from a Woo, from my collection of modern fairy tales, When Magic Calls. We're going to be working in this today as an example document. Before you can see any of your editor's or critique partner's feedback, you do need to turn on your Microsoft Word track changes, if they haven't been already. To do that, go to your top menu bar and click on Review. Then select Track Changes. Now your track changes will be turned on. Mine are currently at all markup. That means anytime a change is made, I will see it off to the right hand side in a little balloon. So let's say that I need to delete this word. I'll delete it. And now that balloon has appeared. I can also choose to view this in simple markup. So if I click the arrow next to all markup and choose simple, now a red line will appear on the left-hand side marking a place a change was made, but I'm not gonna actually see the change in the document. I can always click on this red line and that will automatically switch my view to all markup so I can see what that change was. If I go back to that arrow, you can also choose to view this document with no markup and as the original. I'm going to leave this on all markup. This is my favorite way of viewing and giving feedback. Next, you need to make sure you're seeing all types of feedback. In order to do that, click on show markup. Make sure the check mark appears next to comments 
insertions and deletions, and formatting. If you do not have a check mark next to all of those, you won't see all of that feedback. So if I take away this, that comment goes away and I can't tell that a change has been made there. So I'll go back to show markup and recheck insertions and deletions. Next, you need to make sure you're seeing the comment balloons the way that you would like to. To do that, go to show markup and click balloons. I can choose to see my revisions in my balloons, which is what we're seeing now. I could also choose to see them in, in line. That will change it so that the word that's been deleted has been crossed out and I can see that that change has been made, but it's not marked by a balloon. Notice it is still marked on the left hand side by that little bar. This time it's gray because we're in the all markup view. I'm going to go back to that show markup and balloons, and I can also choose to see only comments and formatting in balloons. So if I click this, right now that insertion and deletion has stayed the same, but if I had some sort of comment, we'll put comment, that appears in a balloon. I like everything in balloons because I can see it easier, so I'm going to go back to show markup and change it to show revisions in balloons. Finally, you need to make sure you're seeing the feedback from everyone or only from the people who you want to. To do that, go to show markup again and choose specific people. Here is where you can choose whose feedback you're seeing. Right now I have all reviewers checked, which doesn't really matter because I'm the only reviewer, but if you have multiple people working in the same document, it might be helpful to look at only one person's feedback at a time. I'm going to leave this as it is. Another way you can view the feedback is in reviewing panes. To do that, click on the arrow next to reviewing pane, and I can choose to see all of the feedback in a vertical pane or a horizontal one. I'll click vertical first, and now you can see what has been changed in a left-hand vertical column. If I had addressed any of these changes, I could click this refresh button and it would refresh my list. To exit out of this, click the X. If I go back to reviewing pane, I can also see that same information in a horizontal view down at the bottom like this. I don't like that one as much, so I'm going to make this go away by hitting the X. That's how you can turn on Microsoft Word track changes and make sure you're seeing all of the feedback you have been given in the way that you want to see it. Next, I want to share addressing and leaving feedback through track changes. Before you start doing anything with your feedback in a Microsoft Word document like this, I recommend saving a copy. That way, if you accidentally hit reject all or something like that, you have a copy saved that hasn't been touched. There are two different ways we can accept and reject feedback in Microsoft Word. If I click the arrow under accept, I can choose to accept this one change and move on to the next, or I can choose to accept all changes. I can also choose to accept all changes and stop tracking. That will turn off track changes after it accepts them all. If I just click accept, that will accept the comment that I was currently on and move on automatically to the next comment. So that's how I can accept my changes. If I want to reject them, I have the same exact options under reject. I can click the arrow here and choose to reject and move on to the next, just to reject this change. I can choose to reject all changes and again, I can choose to reject all and stop tracking these changes. If I hit this reject button, it will automatically reject the comment that I'm on and move on to the next. I'm gonna go ahead and do that because I didn't actually want to delete that word and see that word has been added back in and there's no longer a comment bubble there. Accepting and rejecting changes will not affect actual comments left on your document, like when I added that comment bubble with comment. 
If you decide that you like communicating with your editor through these comment bubbles, to add a new bubble, all you have to do is highlight the text you want that bubble to attach to and click New Comment. Now I can type whatever I want. I will put New Comment. If you want to reply to one of these comments, you have that option down here. So I'll click on Reply and I can type whatever I want. I'll put Reply for now. If I am happy with this comment, it's been addressed, I can click Resolve. And now that comment has been resolved. If I changed my mind, I can always click Reopen. Next, you have Comment Options up in the top. Next to New Comment, I can also delete a comment. So I'll click on this first one and choose Delete. And now that comment goes away. To move on to the next comment, I can choose Next. I can go backwards by clicking this previous button. So that's how you can work with comment bubbles in Microsoft Word in order to communicate with your editor. If you've decided you like Microsoft Word track changes and you want to give other people feedback this way, you do the same thing. You turn on track changes up here. You can leave comments this way. And make sure that you have all of those show markups checked that we went over. Then anytime I make a change, it will be marked. So say that this period was supposed to be a question mark. I can make that change and Word will keep track of it for me. Then I will save this document and send it back to the author and they can review my feedback and choose which ones they want to keep and which ones they don't. Next, I want to share some tricks for formatting Microsoft Word's track changes from an editor. The first thing that I learned how to do was how to change that color. Automatically, these changes and the bubbles and the highlight will be in red. Some authors have a problem with that because it gives them flashbacks to bad papers in school. So using red is not the best choice when you are editing. If you want to change the color of your comment bubbles and your insertions and deletions, Go and click the little arrow in a box under Tracking, and then choose Advanced Options. Now I get to pick all of the colors and the way my comments and changes will appear. So under Insertions, I can choose to underline them. I can also choose to have them be color, bold, italic, double underlined, or have a strike through. I like mine underlined. I'm going to leave that alone. I can do the same thing with deletions. I like my deletions to have that line through them so it's clear it has been deleted. But most importantly, this is where I picked my colors. So my comments, I picked turquoise. If I click this arrow, you can see there's also red, auto, black, green. If I scroll down, pink, yellow, all sorts of different colors. I picked this turquoise because I think it's one of the easier to see options. And I just did turquoise across the board. That's what my comments are. That's what my insertions are. That's what my deletions are. Then if I move things around, those appear in green. I could easily change this to something else. Maybe I don't like green. Maybe I want them to be violet. So I'll go ahead and change that. If you have a document that has tables in it, that has its own highlighting colors. I rarely use those, so I've just left those on the default. Formatting, I also changed to turquoise. And then here I can choose the balloon width and which side they are on. So that's how you can change some of the settings for your balloons. I'll go ahead and click OK. Then I will close this box. That's how I changed the color for my comments. One other thing that you might want to change is the font, particularly the font size. The default is tiny. I do work with clients who have a hard time seeing small text, so I like to make my comments bigger. This change is a little bit more complicated. To make this change, hit Control, Alt, Shift, and S, and this screen should pop up. Then click on Options. And under Select Styles to Show, click the arrow and choose All Styles. Then hit OK. 
Then scroll down until you reach balloon text and click the arrow next to balloon text. Then choose modify. Now you can change the font of the balloon text. I can choose a different font, a different font size to bold, italic, or underline it, all of that stuff. In this case, I'm going to leave the font type alone, but I'm gonna change this to a size 11. Then select OK. And now that font size has changed. I'm gonna exit out of the styles pane. So those are a couple of tricks you can use to format your feedback to make sure that the other authors or editors that you're working with can read your feedback, first of all, and that it's highlighted in a color that's easy to see and is pleasing for you and them. When you send a document that you have modified these track changes settings in, those settings go with it. So your settings will be saved when they open it up, it'll look that way. That does mean that whenever someone sends you a document, you're going to have to redo these settings. If you do it as often as I do, you get really good at making these changes, so it's quick and easy. I know that's a lot of technological settings to wade through, but if you're going to use electronic feedback, Microsoft Word Track Changes is one of the easiest and most universal programs to use. It will save you, your editor, and your critique partners time. It's what I use for most of my clients. But you might have a different process. So how do you prefer to give and receive feedback? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And for more videos on editing and writing, subscribe to Ignited Ink Writing, a channel dedicated to helping authors like you transform your writing so it lingers with your readers. Because writing that lingers gets remembered and recommended to others. I'm Caitlin Burvey, editor and writer. To find out more about me, go to www.ignitedinkwriting.com. There you will also find a revision checklist, which will help you get your manuscript ready for an editor or critique partner. And now it's your turn to try out Microsoft Word Track Changes to see if that program will help you ignite your ink.